You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So the last place we left off, um, the chief was getting into a, a bit of a. Uh, a bit of a verbal confrontation with the elders, I'll just uh, say that. Uh, it's, it's getting quite heated. He pretty much threatened to kill them. <laughs> but, well, they apparently they, he's lost a member of his family because of them. So, yeah, tensions are running high. But let's see just how this turns out. All right, guys, sit back and enjoy. Let me attend you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. All right, <clears throat> okay. You serve the tribe at our pleasure, and we can find another should the need arise. Trist notices my mortified expression and pokes me subtly. He makes a drinking gesture and points to the chief. I take it as a cue to fetch the jug and give him a grateful smile, as he just made an excuse for me to remove myself from sight. My distress must have been getting quite clear, and had anyone noticed, my ability to understand them would become apparent. As I approach the cupboard, I realize how shaky my hands are. I need to stabilize myself. Just as I reach for the jug of wine to refill the chief's cup, I spot the pitcher with the overproof punch. I look back, ensuring that no one pays me any mind as the heated exchange continues. You can bark all you like, Aldris. Without the quorum, you cannot do a thing, and no one will support you at the moment. Especially not with the two missing alphas. I pour myself a cup and thirstily down it, grimacing heavily. Fuck! And El wasn't joking! This punch really is fucking strong! Convenient. And how convenient is that your son is responsible for finding them? Wouldn't surprise me if he was gone for weeks. Perish the thought. Those last three days were a nightmare without my wolf to guide me. I sigh, straighten my dress and trying, straight, straightening my dress and trying to compose myself. I take the wine jug and slowly approach the chief. As I pass next to Vithir, he winks indiscreetly, almost as if trying to give me courage. The chief doesn't even regard me, simply pushing his cup in my direction. I look at his wine-stained paw and refill his drink. You can think what you like. He sighs in a resigned tone. I feel sorry for the man in his little outburst when we met thing. I feel sorry for the man in his little outburst when we met makes so much more sense now. I thought Rannick was overwhelmed. This wolf is literally graying away because of those nasty schemers. I have such a newfound respect for how ferociously he protects his son, even in the face of his potential errors. How long do you think you can maintain the charade? If only I had a charade to maintain, old fool. Oh, did someone say charades? Are we playing games now? What fun! The two nasty owls exchange annoyed looks and simply sneer at the other female. You have been an immense help, an owl, as always. It is my pleasure. <laughs> she smiles obliviously while the other two stand up. I wish behind them to return the jug to the table and rejoin Trist at the hearth. Aren't you going to eat? I'd rather share a meal with pigs than with you two. That can be arranged. The chief scoffs while the old hag throws another date at her counterpart. And now, come, we're leaving. Oh, so soon? But we only just got here. I wish she could. She would just bloody die already. The old male mutters as he passes next to me. He gives me a very mean look, and I fight the urge to just stick my tongue out at him. Seeing them leave, both Chief and Vithir exchange looks of relief and look uh, relieved looks and return to a casual conversation. I watch as the elderly female struggles to stand up, her arms shaking as they strain against her own weight. Her friends pay her no mind, and she she's effectively left behind. I come to her side and gently sliding my hand under her arm and aiding her to her legs. Oh, My, what a gallant little pup! She mutters, drawing approving gazes of the chief and his friend. Lend me your paw to the doors, won't you? She points to the exit, and I nod. Her walk is quite uncertain, and she takes her time between each step. It was nice meeting you, young man. Do you like playing games? She asks idly, but I don't respond. I used to love playing games when I was a little pup. My mother often took me to visit with my father in the neighboring tribe. Oh, such fun we would have. He always came with the silliest of larks. Her genuine cheer brings a smile to my face. But only one has been my utmost favorite through the years, to spot a true wolf. She lifts her finger, bopping it into the distance. You see, there are really two types of people in this world. Wolves in sheepskins, and sheep in woven coats. The female leans in, whispering as if revealing a secret. I like it now. She's way smarter than she appears. A true wolf is no fool. He lies in wait, patiently gauging his prey, only to engage when it favors his pack. 
She straightens up again. And then you have the sheep, pretty ground full of bluster and hubris, flaunting their fake coats like shields. You and I know the truth. A piece of fur is no armor. It's only their bluster that fools the rest. But not the real wolves. Real wolves know they only have to lay and wait for the right time. My heart skips a beat as I begin to think that she's not what she appears. Her ears twitch again and her eyes center on me with a smile. It's good to see another wolf around. This village has become a pasture as of late. She sighs as we arrive at the doorway and I release her from, her, from the hold. She bows her head respectfully and I reciprocate the gesture. With the last of the elders gone, the remaining two wolves seem to have regained some of their usual humor I associate them with. I take turns with Trish rotating the spit, trying not to draw much attention to either of us. The chief simply vents off his steam and engages Vithir in mocking the two... <laughs> two gods that left. I quite understand them, really. I wish I could work off some steam myself. They did get under my skin. Especially with how fixated they seem to be on Rannick. Once the chickens are done, Trist removes them from the spit and places, the, places them on nice silver plates. He garnishes them with some of the garden roots and vegetables to make the dishes more presentable to the wolves. We place the platters around them. Plenty of food for the two males, and they begin to idly pick at their meals. <clears throat> Excuse me. Poor fellas. Suffered hell of abuse. Good thing they couldn't understand it, eh? Ugh, the fucking things are more trouble than they're worth. The chief sneers at us, but I don't mind. He's still seething, and so, so would I if someone threatened my son like that. We simply take a step back to give them some space. Come now, they're without fault here, you know that. Pithir places his paw on his friend's shoulder and the other male sighs in defeat. I know. But I cannot help blaming the human for, his, for this perilous situation. The brown male tries to speak, but the chief raises his hands to cut him off. Even if he is without fault, he put Rannick in danger. And Rannick put him, and Rannick put him in such, and Rannick put him in such in turn. They're riding in the same cart, friend. I don't despise that whelp. The chief sighs and waves his paw at me. In fact, he seems a positive factor. Rannick's changed since his arrival. The decision to undertake that search took me by surprise. That's a true wolf behavior. I thought he would always remain a pup. See? Vithir smiles. We have to see this through, no matter where the chips may fall. Besides, if not the human, Aldris would find another reason to get on our case. We were in perfect mutual check thus far. This human introduces an element of chaos I do not like. We were dancing to their tune for 20 years, old friend. This might be an opportunity to take away their fiddles. I hope so. I do hope so. The chief nods and waves his paw invitingly at both me and Trist. We approach cautiously, Trist more, more so than I do, as he clearly didn't understand where this conversation went. To his surprise, the chief passes past one of the plates we just arranged. Here, eat. He grumbles, nodding towards the far end of the table. We both bow respectfully and take the plate with us to the designated area. Trish gives me a look of utter disbelief as we take our seats. With some distance between us, the wolves return to their... I will banter. Fifth are trying to cheer up his friend with some jokes and reminiscing. The chief seems to enjoy their conversation about a joint love interest from years past. Apparently she had a pair of tits one could bury his muzzle in. <laughs> to each their own. I notice the bunny's reluctance at eating the chicken, and I wonder for a moment if he's not a vegetarian... But his hungered expression quickly dispels this notion. I think he's worried it's some kind of trick. I take the lead and simply cut off a strip of the breast and put it to my mouth. Mmm. Immediately I'm hit with a delicious blend of roasted chicken, thyme, and coriander. All that time turning the damn spit was worth it. Seeing my, liber seeing my liberty enjoying the meal and no following repercussions, the bunny finally joins me. I wish we could have engaged in similar banter as our betters, however, we, we have to be mute. The meal in the scenery is enough to entertain us for as long as it takes to clean the chicken to the very bone. Through all this time, the chief and Vithir didn't ask even once for our help, the brown male refilling their cups and himself and fetching things from the cupboard on his own. In fact, that's pretty much what he's been doing from what he was doing from the very beginning. It seems we were here at the whims of those two old farts. When we're finished with our meal, the chief dismisses us, and Trist leads me back into the pantry. I help out with bringing various plates back, various plates back into the room, and we save up the lasting foods by either putting them back into their respective containers or leaving on the plat or leaving on the plates for later consumption. Perishables are dumped into a barrel that serves as a disposable bin. Apparently, they use it for, compo for comp composting later, which again shows that nothing's really wasted here. I immediately think of recycling. This is a very green society, which makes sense since they live in the forest. Once the tables are empty and wiped clean, the bunny sighs. This is quite a workout. Good work. Good leave. The chief waves at us, and I almost smirk at his uncharacteristic broken speech. 
By Tris but by Tris's annoyance, I deduced he was again using old Sylvan. We simply bow respectfully and walk towards the entrance. Once we're in the atrium, Trish takes a seat on one of the couches. He reclines back, resting against the wall, and I look around as he pats a saw and he pats a spot beside him. Are we allowed to? Only the chief lives here, and he's busy right now. What if someone sees us? All the attendants are bunnies. None of my kin will sell you out if you're at my side. Besides, I have good ears. I'll hear someone. I'll hear anyone approaching. Huh? I smile, taking a seat and resting my back. Damn, this cushion feels good. My feet are killing me. I look at my abused legs. I really need some shoes. I'd say it's your heart that's going to be your end. Hmm? You were quite rattled in there. I guess I should be thankful I cannot understand them. Heh. <laughs> yeah. Did you learn anything, little spy? The bunny winks at me playfully, and I grimace. More than I would like. It seems Rannick pretty much has a target on his back. Yeah, they do seem to dislike him a whole lot. Maybe, but now it seems more serious. The chief was very riled up. I saw that. And the elders. Ugh! I sigh, shivering slightly. They seem one step away from deposing the chief. Triss looks into the distance, clearly thinking over what I have just said, and, I sh and a short pause falls upon us. He seems uneasy, and I give him an encouraging gaze. Look, in all honesty, I don't, I don't mean half the things I said about your master. If you can even call him that. I raise my brow in confusion. I know he doesn't see himself as much. As such. He tried to be friendly with me. I just couldn't bring myself to give him a chance. But I do see he's different. They all are. Who? The young wolves. They're from a different stock. Even Varric and Vithyr are. The elders are the warmongering, bloodthirsty savages stuck in the past. The bunny animal sneers, his choppers on full display. Varric put an end to raids and pillaging. In fact, as much as I hate to admit it, Tyrannin began prospering under his rule. The forest didn't experience war in a generation. Such lengthy peace. It's a much-needed breathing space. He readjusts himself, begrudging his own confession. Although I still very much, st although still very much oppressive, Varric loosened the iron grip on the Sylvan folk. We're allowed to practice our faith again, and even some of the wolves return to the old ways. The elders resent that. I ponder his words for a moment. It seems like Rannick wants to continue the course taken by his father. He wants even more change. I guess that's enough for the elders to despise the mere idea of him. It's not just that. I don't understand how much go I don't understand much of goings on going going ons here, but I gather Rannick has hampered one of their schemes. <laughs> Trish shrugs, slightly defeated. It happened before I arrived here. All I know is that it somehow involved that white wolf you danced with. You mean Tano? Yeah. Huh. The plot thickens. But Rannick and Tano are very much at odds, at least three years now. It's hard to imagine the two of them working together against the Elders. Unless that's what they fell out over? I considered discussing this further, but again, I just met the bunny. I shouldn't divulge Rannick's private matters to anyone. Especially since his life seems to be hanging in the balance, and as the chief said himself, I could be the one to tip the scales. I feel extremely unsettled, and my heart speeds up a little. What is it? I worry about Rannick. I worry because I don't know what dangers lurk out in those woods, but worse yet, even if he returns to his life, and his life is still in peril. More the reason to keep your head down. He bobs me with his shoulder. The only way you can help him is by not accidentally tripping him over. Easier said than done. Rannick has many friends, and it's clear he has one he, he has one in you as well. I try not to blush at his frankness. Just make sure he doesn't lose them. Oh. He'll need all the allies to weather what's to weather the coming storm. Storm? Trist looks at the floor for a moment and sighs. There's a war brewing. The entire forest whispers about it. We don't know with whom and when, but it's coming. Why did you think I was so intent on figuring you out? He jumps off the couch. I just don't want my people to get caught in between again. If I learn anything that would be to your kin's detriment, I will tell you. I promise. I know. The bunny nods, giving me a genuine smile. I can smell deceit and danger. One of the perks of being a prakin. You're too much all over the place to be a threat. I smile back and stand up, trying to extend my hand. This doesn't mean I trust you, he mutters reluctantly, eyeing me out. But I suppose we can have a truce for the time being. 
Trish sighs, and we shake on it. I'll take that over your stink eye any day. Is that... is it that effective? The bunny chuckles, and I join his mirth. You have no idea. Good to know. As we walk outside, Trish turns to face me with an inquisitive look. Are you okay to head back on your own? Hmm? Since it's my first short day in a while, I'd like to unwind with my friends. Oh, yes, of course. I nod eagerly. I'll be fine. The path is quite straightforward. Yeah. So is acting ignorant, yet you managed to mess that up. <laughs> I smirk, shaking my head. Just don't stray off the path. These woods are easy to get lost in. I nod again and wave at the bunny and wave the bunny goodbye as he headed towards his dorm. My, what a day. The walk back is quite refreshing and gives me a chance to digest everything that happened today. The elders proved everything Rannick said and more. I cannot stand the thought of these of those nasty beasts. And now on the other hand, although nice, she's an enigma. And considering my current situation, surprises are not exactly welcome. I'm glad I was able to get to know the bunny a bit more, but now I understand his motives at the very least. He simply is trying to survive while at the same time looking out for his people. I would do the exact same thing had our roles been reversed. I close my eyes, taking in the air and the sounds, trying to get rid of all the negativity accumulated because of those two old farts. This fairy tale slowly takes on a, dan takes on a dangerous turn. I get back to the village without any problems, and my head is slightly clearer. The tribe's wolves give me a few funny looks as I pass through this main square, but nothing more. I try to give a glance towards Vul's shop, but we're still ignoring each other, I suppose. If Vul wants to act like a pup, so be it. I sigh and walk down the path leading towards Rannick's house. Hey there, pet! I look at the brown female rushing, rushing out from Vithyr's house to greet me. She's carrying a small wicker basket filled with some bread and pastries. Been waiting for you. My father asked me to give you, to give you those upon your return. And, of course, Verissa returns the basket. The girl exaggeratedly points to herself and the shop in the, ba the, shop in the basket. Take them. She pushes it into my hands, and I cannot help but smile and bow graciously. Indeed, an apple didn't fall far from the tree. I'm glad to see you in good spirits. Going to the villa can be quite stressful, especially with those grouches around. I look at her wide-eyed, and she mimics an old, hunched person shouting into the distance. Oh boy, you said it, sister. Ah, uh, Trat! You don't understand me, do you, sweetie? She frowns, and I just try to maintain my dumbfounded expression. Hmm, let's see. If you... The female gently touches my chest. You, sad, scared. She pantomimes those expressions, and I really struggle internally not to erupt in laughter. Come here. Her two fingers stride in the air, and she points at Vithyr's shop. Okay? She asks hopefully, and I just sigh, nodding in gratitude. Damn it, girl, I really want to not like you, but you make it impossible. Good. She smiles and plants a kiss on my cheek. I'm actually stunned, rubbing the spot where her nose has just touched me, trying to conceal a blush. See you later, pet. She returns to her home, and I think it's better I get out of sight before I draw someone's ire. Home sweet home, I mutter under my breath, really glad to see the cottage again. I jump over the uneven step and regard the porch. Tonight's the night, well, tonight's the night when I'll enjoy myself out in the open, just taking in the beautiful scenery. After the week I had, I deserve a little vacation. Plus, the smell of the woods outside reminds me so much of him. <sighs> I miss Rannick so much. I plop the basket next to the door. As I pass the table, I gently touch the dandelion to steady my emotions. The trek up to the villa and back again really took the wind out of my lungs. I guess my stamina is lower than I thought. The earlier cleanup didn't help, but it didn't help either. I take a cup and pour myself some water, drinking it up in one go. I decide to decide to rest up a bit, so I walk to the bedroom and plop onto the bed. My legs are killing me, and my eyelids feel extremely heavy. I simply not. I simply need to close my eyes for just a moment. Oh dear! Stop going to sleep. I don't sleep well. In fact, I'm having a bit of a nightmare. My torturous dreams finally forces me awake sometime well into the evening. Uh oh. As I open my eyes to see the cottage flooded with darkness, I take a relieved sigh. I can't remember what I dreamt about. All I know is it had something to do with Rannick. At least no whispers were involved this time, so I can easily brush it off without I'll brush it off to my worrying. I get up and walk to the kitchen. There's still ashes from the morning, but I'm too lazy to get this sorted now. A, I simply stack new pieces of wood and start a fire. One strike, two strikes, and the kindling is burning. I'm getting better at this. Within moments, the room floods with the warm hue with the warm hues and I just with the warm hues, and I decided to light up the candles as well. I'm still tremendously tired, but I need a moment of respite from my uneasy from my uneasy sleep. 
I'm worried that I might have stank up the dress during my rest, but it was airy enough to prevent me from sweating. I really ought to be more careful with that. I won't be going to bed dressed up like that. It's disrespectful. My gaze ventures towards the window, and I see the moon high up above the treetops. It's such a lovely night, and I remind myself of the promise I made this morning. Day or night, nothing stops me from enjoying the lovely views on the porch. I pet softly the, dandel I pet softly the dandelion as I rustle about the kitchen, gathering some nibbles to take out with me. I place two rolls, a sausage, and some cheese onto a plate and fill a tankard of ale. Unwinding like this was a dream come true ever since I realized this place had a porch. I creak the door open and step in outside, immediately walking towards the table. My skin shivers slightly as I take a seat. The chair is quite cool, but it's welcome. But it's a welcome sensation. I just admire the scenery and wet my lips, noticing a faint glow of a fireplace in the distance. All right, guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.